What's going on guys? Welcome back to Peak Performance Engineering. Today, I'm gonna to be taking you guys through uh, some of the new parts that we got from Go Power Sports to finish off the Zircon uh, 150 build, which is right here. Yeah. So from where we were in the last episode, we got the uh, caliper brackets swapped around on the other side uh, to be able to flip the axle. And basically now I'm just waiting for, uh, I was waiting for the new sprocket, which came. Let's show that to you right here. So. This is the uh, new sprocket. I think it's a 54 tooth. I, I don't remember offhand, but uh, this guy was, I don't know, a lot smaller, 32 tooth maybe. So I wanna say when I ran the calculations, um, with the new sprocket, we will now be able to do about 60 miles an hour at 5,500 RPM, where uh, I think originally it was something crazy, like the, the cart theoretically could have done 90 miles an hour, which of course wasn't possible with uh, 150 cc power, right? So, so I think now um, we should have a lot better uh, acceleration and hopefully get us up to, you know, that 40 mile an hour speed is really, um, that's about the max I want to go on the trails and stuff that I'm going through. So um, should be good. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this all bolted back together. All right, guys. So I got the sprocket all uh, bolted on and uh, Got the little hub bolted back up and everything started to put in the um, the whole axle here. And then what I noticed is, so the sprocket is just slightly bigger than the um, brake disc. And it looks like we are going to have a clearance issue. So um, you can see how kind of close it is to the bar there. So I was hoping there'd be enough room, but I guess it didn't really account for, of course, there's going to be the thick chain and it's probably going to contact. So. I was looking at this piece and there's these two uprights connecting it to the top. Um, so I think what I'm actually gonna be able to do is I'm just gonna cut it maybe about here for now and we'll trim it back later, but I'm not sure where that, one of those uprights for the engine mount may go here or may go here. So um, I'm gonna probably just for now cut it here just to give myself some leeway. And then I'll probably cut this here. And um, I think this bracket will be fine. It'll be totally strong enough to hold the, the caliper, which is really lightweight, so it'll be supported here and then still supported there. So I don't see any issues. On this side, I'm not sure yet. I'll kind of think about it. I mean, the motor is gonna be, of course, pushing down on this, but uh, it's still gonna be supported here. And then once the uprights come up, then they're gonna be welded to that huge plate, the engine, the motor mount, basically, which is also gonna be welded here. So. I think that's gonna be honestly pretty dang sturdy, especially since most of the weight's gonna kind of be over here. I, I think that's probably gonna be strong enough too. I don't really see an issue, but uh, I don't know. I might do some more reinforcement, but anyway, so I'm gonna give that a little snip, a little snip there, and then we'll have plenty of clearance. And then uh, once I get the motor finished, the next step will be to bring the motor in here and kind of put it up, bolt it onto the engine plate, and then start kind of mocking that up and then tack it in place. All right, fellas, and here's the uh, 440 that we're going to be putting into the go-kart. And let's see, I'll show you some of the stuff we got. Some RTV for the front cover. Um, let's see, we got some Go Power Sports. We got a header. And let's see, we got an intake. I think this is the intake adapter. Uh, jet kit. Yep. 18-pound valve springs because we're taking out the governor. And uh, this actually is some extra stuff that came with the motor. That's the starter for the motor. Well, the, the starter switch. And what else? This is the uh, Chinese torque converter that uh, probably won't work, but we'll give it a shot. Got this bad boy off Amazon, so we'll see how that goes. Came with everything the guy needs, belt torque converter, the cover, so we'll see how much modification stuff we got to chop off to make this bad boy work. But uh, we're going to get started doing all this. I got uh, feeler gauges for the, for the rockers. This is just some of the old stuff, the old 150, but uh, anyway, got to get rocking and rolling. We're not going to use the, uh, the gas tank here. I think we're going to use the factory Zircon one, so we can get rid of this, get rid of the stock uh, exhaust and the stock airbox. So this thing will be all cleaned up, pop the front cover off. This is where we'll have access to the governor, which that's the top of the governor there. So we gotta pull out the arm, pull out the governor. We'll plug that up, and then we'll plug up the hole for the uh, little oil pressure right here. And get her back together, and we'll be rocking and rolling, boys. All right, so slowly but surely, we're taking her apart, ripped off the gas tank, 
This is my kind of uh, extra parts box here, but um, I already put the uh, new jet in the carburetor, so it was super simple. You just literally undo this one 10 millimeter bolt that straps down, take a screwdriver, unloosen the old uh, jet, pop in the new one, super simple. Um, there's mostly a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts on this whole thing, so I still have to put the adapter on for the intake. Um, kind of interesting on this, this is just kind of a slip fit on this uh, breather filter tube, so I'll probably run that to a uh, to some kind of breather. Um, but still gotta get the exhaust off. Uh, Alright, now the old girl's got the uh, new Go Power Sports filter on here. Uh, she's looking good. Still gonna have to figure out how we're gonna make this uh, throttle work once this governor's gone, but uh, I know there's some videos on the old YouTube I'll have to go check out and see. Um, I think Go Power Sports sells some kind of plate also to, to kind of make it easier, but I don't really want to wait for shipping on that, especially last week I ordered some parts and it took them a few days um, just to ship it. You know, they're, they're low staffed right now, so don't really want to do that. Uh, so I'm going to try to figure out what I got to drill and kind of make some magic work here and get this baby rocking. But next we're going to pop on this exhaust and uh, from there it's just going to be doing the cover. Let's see if I can get this big girl around here. Pop the cover off, and that's where the fun starts to get this governor off. And I already unbolted the, uh, the low oil pressure sensor. Um, so the final thing is once the cover's off, I'll pull this bolt out, and then we're going to have to uh, uh, actually go power sports, sell some self-tapping bolts that are supposed to uh, fill these holes. But I think I got the wrong ones. They sent me some little tiny quarter-inch thread. And I think I definitely need something bigger than that, but I'll, I'll check. But if not, probably gonna go on down to the hardware store tomorrow and I'll get some other self tappers and zip those in. And I'll do that before I put the cover back on. That way if there's any shavings, I can get it all out of there. But otherwise, this is uh, easy peasy. Of course, the hard part after I do the governor is gonna be popping the uh, rocker cover off and doing the 18 pound valve springs. And I got some rope to put into the cylinder to keep the valves from falling, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna keep on rocking and keep updating. All right, boys, so getting to the exhaust, it comes off super easy, two bolts, boom, this whole big ugly muffler assembly comes off of there. But once you get here, uh, you can see with these studs that they've got, uh, there's actually a section that's not threaded. And so, you know, the flange originally is, you know, this is pretty large, half inch or something, but uh, once you get the new header, your header flange is, uh, you know, less than half that, right? So it's probably just some eighth inch. Um, so anyway, once you bolt her on, then you run into the issue where you can't get your nut on, so you've got to remove these studs. And uh, I'm just going to pick up tomorrow, I'll probably just go pick up some uh, stainless steel bolts to, uh, to screw in there. So anyway, did the old, uh, you know, put two nuts together on here trick and uh, got it loose. Now I got to do the other side and then the header will be on. It's going to have to come off anyway. I'm going to end up putting some uh, header paint on it um, just so it doesn't rust. It's just crappy mild steel, so that'll rust out. Uh, so we get that done and then uh, might call it a night uh, or maybe I'll start popping off the cover um, just to start messing with uh, the governor stuff. So we'll see. All right, boys. So it's the next day. Came back down to work on this motor some more. Uh, got this rocker cover back off, got the spark plug out. And then uh, what I did was just look down in the cylinder at the piston and um, just spun it over with the crank uh, until I got it up at top dead center. Uh, made sure both of the valves are closed, uh, completely closed, so uh, uh, the push rods are down, so there was plenty of movement um, on both of the rockers, so I went ahead, blasted those off, and then now we just got to go ahead and uh, push these in and get these caps off. Uh, oh, so also I should point out, I actually, uh, some guys were saying, you know, put rope in here, so I was looking around, I didn't have any rope, but I found these old um, uh, tie downs. And I was able to just, uh, or bungee cord, I was able to just cut that and stick that in there. It seemed to work pretty awesome because it's actually uh, something hard you can push against. So anyway, that worked great. So now I'm just going to blow these guys off and uh, we'll swap out with the new springs. So just looking at a quick comparison. So this is the factory spring versus the Go Power Sports spring. So about the same height, but... Um, a little bit more push down definitely on the uh, the new spring so uh, these are 18 pounds um, not sure what these are at I think the 212s and stuff I've heard are like maybe nine pound springs but uh, with this 440 
not sure if that's the same case, but uh, definitely a little bit, a little bit stronger. So we should be good. All right, so now I got the spring swapped out. Make sure you put the uh, lash cap back on the exhaust side. Uh, if you don't, things will not be happy. So um, now I just got to go ahead and set the uh, the valve lash. So we'll put the rockers back on. Uh, I looked up the specs in the owner's manual. It says six thousandths cold for the intake and eight thousandths cold for the exhaust. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, put the cover back on. And then next we'll be popping off the front cover and doing the uh, governor removal. All right, so at this point, the uh, the valves are all done, the new springs are in. I just got this sitting here, um, just because uh, actually with the 1316 socket, you can't actually slip it onto the plug with the uh, with the valve cover in the way. So kind of interesting. But now we're to the point. Uh, I did pull this governor arm off. It was just one 10 millimeter bolt to loosen. Then you pry the little clamp apart. That pops off. That's what she looks like there. And then I took the uh, the spring and the uh, throttle alarm so this I think I'm gonna end up reusing and uh, we'll end up having to cut some stuff make some magic happen to get that working but now we just got to take off uh, whatever however many 67 bolts we got right here pry this cover off and then we can have access to the uh, to the uh, governor so boom let's make it all right guys so I got the cover off I uh, got off these 97,000 bolts and uh, I don't know if there was freaking red lock type but holy cow these things were freaking on there tight man my little Ryobi uh, couldn't even hang, ended up having to use a breaker bar and snap all those suckers off, popped it off. Looks like uh, my gasket even stayed pretty good. She's got a little messed up stuff there, so I might just give her a little coat of RTV anyway, which I already bought, so no big deal. But uh, anyway, I went ahead and pulled the little cotter pin out of this uh, governor arm, so she slid down. I just had to move the crank a little bit to uh, get her to fall right down and then just like everyone says on YouTube make sure you get this little washer out it's held on there with grease so it otherwise it'll stick up there so pulled that on out slid her out of the way going the garbage bin here and uh, next thing is we're gonna break this apart so if you look at all the stuff online everyone's saying to use some uh, tin snips which I don't have so I'm gonna try some side cutters and hopefully we can uh, just go ahead and break this into a few parts. That'll let these slide out. Then there's a clip that's around the center. We'll have to get that clip off. And then this whole thing will come right off. And then there's some kind of other uh, little washer on the bottom. The same thing, you gotta make sure you get that sucker out. And the final thing is to take out the oil pressure sensor. So there's just two bolts, that'll come out. And uh, there's a bolt over here, right there, on the side. So we'll have to uh, get that too. All right, boys, so. We got that oil sensor out. We still got a hole over here in the side of the block. So I'm either gonna go see if I can get a self tapper uh, or I do have a tap and die set. So maybe I'll go upstairs and uh, see if I wanna tap these guys out. Um, but uh, we'll see about that. Still not sure. Anyway, came over here, grabbed my snips. Super simple. Um, just to basically cut this and kind of pull the plastic apart. Really, really easy. And then you bring these fingers apart and you just slide out this middle dude. Garbaggio. And apparently the last thing, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's that little clip around the base of this uh, this little thing here. So I gotta take my screwdriver, get that off, and then this whole assembly will slide up. And then remember there's a hidden washer underneath, we gotta make sure we get that. And then this job's complete. So the key to the success that I just had to uh, remove this governor here was, uh, see that little ring on the upper top there? So to get that sucker off, it was super easy just to use my little pick tool and I just hammered it in there actually and just kind of drove it and it popped it right out. So that's the uh, hero of the day today. And then like I said here is that little washer. Make sure that comes off or you will be having a bad day, sir. All right, cool. So this part's done. All right, guys. So I just got back from the hardware store, picked up a bunch of stuff to uh, hopefully get this thing finished. So. Uh, what I didn't show you guys on camera was before I left, I ended up, uh, I did end up tapping this. I used a uh, 5 16 24, something like that. So I, I think it was just a standard 5 16 And uh, then for this guy here, I went with um, a 7 16 by 24, something like that. So I did buy some red Loctite. Um, I also got a couple O-rings too. So um, kind of look at that. I'm not sure... 
Yeah, we'll see. I got a fender washer too, so I'm not sure if I'll just kind of have uh, the fender washer stop there. I may not be able to use the O-ring because I'm not sure the bolt, you know, if I'll be able to get it all the way to sit on this part. We'll see. But if not, it um, doesn't matter. Loctite on the threads and then just a fender washer. Uh, that's going to seal it. It's going to be fine. So the other issue is um, just like I had read online. So I got this uh, torque converter kit off Amazon and I was reading guys were crying that the hardware was wrong. Um, and that uh, there were some issues with the oil fill on one of the sides. So there is definitely an issue with the oil fill. So um, you can't get these in the right spot with the oil fill right here. You can see how it's resting on it. So at first I was going to just kind of clearance this and chop it because there are threads that go all the way down to about here. And then I was going to try to re-put it back. But I'm, I'm going to wait and cut that as a last resort. Um, what I will have to cut is just a little cap. So... This plastic cap, I'll notch that down so it'll be basically flat. Um, you know, I might even just tighten it all the way down. I'll just cut it off. We'll never have to use that again. There's still the oil uh, fill, the dipstick, which will be on this side. So we don't really need this one. The other issue is uh, you will have to do some clearancing or some uh, extending. So you can see here, uh, this bolt lines up fine. These other three will need some clearancing. So I just kind of put a direction that... Uh, kind of as you can see right so we, we need to extend this extend this extend this they did give me the right bolts I got four of them uh, they didn't give me any lock washers which is what the instruction said so I did have to go buy some lock washers and then with my engine I found out that uh, you know this is a 3 8 24 thread and they actually didn't give me a bolt for this and the bolt that came with the kit is like um, I think a 516 so it doesn't fit so anyway I had to go and buy a new uh, 3 8 24 bolt so I got all that. Uh, so hopefully we're good and we can start, you know, at least getting this all back assembled and get the whole motor done. And then, like I said, work on the top plate and uh, we'll have this all bolted up looking good. I already put on the, I think the 12 tooth, 12 tooth pulley, the, the bigger, the one for the bigger one. Also, just an FYI, I just found out, uh, mocking this up, that this end piece where your bolt for the crank is supposed to go through this is actually for 5 16 also the same bolt that they give you um, but the 3 8 bolt won't fit so I'm gonna have to go and drill that out so no big deal just some extra work but drill that out to 3 8 and then put that sucker on there and then this will all go in and hopefully thread all that good stuff so alright guys so I've been out here working on this um, torque converter assembly so on this backing plate I did have to, uh, well, this hole actually lines up okay. These other three holes, I did some notching, as you can see. And um, I thought I could just get away with notching it and then keeping uh, this side of the drain fill uh, stock. But I still wasn't quite there. Uh, it was still kind of too off-center and uh, really too off-center here with this. So what I did was uh, I just actually came over, chopped off the end, of this so there's enough threads inside um, to be able to chop this amount off and uh, then I, I was able to still thread the cap back in I just cleaned the threads out with some brake clean and then uh, I took the top of this cap and just went and used my cutoff tool my, my angle grinder just boom chopped that off and I was able just to screw it in by hand nice and tight so now I think this will give us the clearance we need uh, where you can see this is flush instead of sticking out so that should be a good clearance now to be able to bolt that thing on. Okay, so here's a photo I just, or a video. Um, I just put the backing plate on, put the four bolts in. Um, so anyway, it looks like it clears. Uh, it's pretty well centered on there. It's not terrible, so I think that's going to be uh, good enough. And if we can look at the back side, yeah, you can see this basically just rests right on the cap. And uh, once it's bolted in, it should be fine and hold everything in place, no big deal. So yeah, not too much work, just uh, like I said, elongating those holes and then of course cutting that off, which, you know, takes a little bit of balls, I guess, right? Because uh, once you cut it, there's no going back. So luckily that worked out, no problem. And uh, hopefully this works. I think this setup was a hundred bucks, right? Um, I just didn't want to spend the big two, 300 bucks that I was seeing um, for like, for example, the Go Power Sports um, stuff. So. We'll see if this thing holds. If it doesn't, that's okay. The backing plate was kind of the most important. And then I can always uh, switch this clutch out uh, for for like an actual, you know, Comet um, 40 series. And I think those were only like 60 bucks. So worst case, even if I have to do that down the road, 
I'll still be in it for a lot cheaper than uh, going that way off the bat. So, yeah, so pretty pumped now. So we got the front cover all back on, put some RTV, and then uh, I started mocking up the um, torque converter. So um, one thing I did find was they gave me a, um, a little spacer to go right at the end uh, of the uh, crank. And it was about twice as long as this. So what was happening was it was making it you know, way too uh, off center from the driven pulley. So I uh, cut it in half, you know, or tried, tried to cut it in half pretty abysmal but uh, I was able to make this one a little bit better um, so anyway now it works it's uh, pretty well lined up of course kind of hard to turn it with one hand here but anyway give it a bunch of spins looks pretty dang uh, good so she's coming together uh, we're gonna use the gas tank that's on the current uh, Zircon 150 so this is pretty much how she's gonna look uh, just got the header bolts too early today so I used a, a hex head bolt but uh, still got to get the header painted, so that'll be something uh, something tomorrow to, to mess with. Still got to get a new spark plug, too. Ended up forgetting to grab that today. But uh, governor's done. Jetted the carburetor. Got the intake on. Torque converter's done. 18-pound valve springs are in. So, uh, yeah, she's looking good. Just got uh, got to do some stuff with some wiring still. Get this thing uh, probably just for now I'll just go ahead and bolt it to the engine maybe but uh, kind of the plan was to actually stick it up in the cockpit uh, so right now there is currently a keyed start in the go-kart I just want to kind of get that out of there I'm just gonna run these wires to the front and that way I can just use this key and use this for the engine start things kind of simple so all right all right so here's a little tech tip so I finally got around to getting the new NGK spark plug um, so these come standard with this LG, which is just a Chinese kind of, it's actually like a knockoff NGK spark plug. Um, so I actually used to work for NGK for a long time. So we used to, you know, cross-reference a lot of this stuff. So uh, so this is an F7 RTC, which is basically equivalent to a 6 or a 7 heat range in NGK. So you could use a BKR7E, which is a V-Power, BKR7ES, which is standard, which is what this is. Uh, or you could go and upgrade... Uh, to an Iridium, which is BKR7 EIX, but uh, those plugs are about nine dollars a piece. They're kind of pricey. So, what you can get that's almost the exact same performance is called the G Power. And what this is, it's still a precious metal uh, fine wire electrode, just like the Iridium, but this one is platinum. NGK calls it G Power, so it's a single platinum. Um, the ground strap, you know, doesn't have precious metal; it's just regular nickel. Uh, but uh, anyway, good performance, and these are only about three dollars. So uh, I think a standard plug is like two bucks, two fifty nowadays. So it's just a little bit more money, but it's really a whole lot more plug. So this, um, they don't make the uh, G Power in a seven heat range. They only make it in a little bit hotter six, which should be totally fine for this application. So this is a BKR six EGP. Let's see if you can, uh, you can kind of see it. So yeah, BKR six EGP. So. Anyway, the cool thing with this versus the original plug is the original plug takes the 1316 socket. This is actually all the same plug except it takes a 5 8 uh, socket. So what this will allow us to do is uh, with the 1316s, I couldn't actually get my socket uh, to fit uh, without taking off the, uh, the rocker cover. So with the 5 8 though, it fits no problem. So anyway, this is just going to make, an, make uh, servicing this machine, you know, when I'm out there on a trail or I'm just getting ready to go ride, I can just more easily get in there and service the spark plug and, and you can get this thing anywhere in stock. Um, so also the stock number on that plug is 7092. That's what you need to give to your auto parts guy and they can pull it up. Uh, so just finishing up with the uh, with the throttle stuff. Uh, I'm not completely finished. It looks like, I think this is where there's some hold downs that are supposed to go for like your throttle cable. Um, but I don't have it. Didn't, didn't come with it uh, in the box. So I don't know if it was missing or whatever. But uh, Anyway, I got this kind of rigged up, so I was able to use this factory spring that used to be here, and I just moved it over to this location, um, so that gives it the pullback it needs, loosened up the friction bolt, and um, I also decided to kind of just have this here, it barely just touches it, but I just figured this would be an easy adjustment for the um, idle, rather than trying to mess with like this little guy down here, so just figured out I can just swing over the screwdriver, change that up, I don't know. We'll see, but uh, basically this is the factory rod that was just super super long and straight, and I just 
made some bends, uh, drilled a tiny little 3 32nds hole in here, and now we got throttle. So it works. What I'm thinking is uh, if I can get the hole down, maybe have the cable run this way, and then I can have the cable just uh, attached to here, and then that way it pulls it up. Anyway, finished all this stuff for today, as far as we can get. Um, you know, who knows? Uh, I'll kind of look into getting this throttle clamp, but uh, I may even just order one of that partial, um, you know, throttle things where it's got the slick little, you know, thingamajig and uh, has some science and some wizardry in there. Uh, it's pretty awesome, so I think that's like 30 bucks. So I might just order even one of those, but we'll see. At least it's good to go. So besides that, I gotta put the filter back on. Engine's completely done. Uh, got in that new spark plug, all this good stuff. Torque converter's all on. Let's swing the big girl around here real quick. So the only thing I got left to do is bolt on the header, which I'm waiting for paint. So I've just got to, uh, I've actually got it hanging here. So just got to clean it up, spray some paint on it, and she'll be sober. All right, guys, so I got the exhaust all painted, got it bolted on. So I also put the gas tank on. Uh, I'm just going to fill it up with some gas. I already put fresh oil in, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and probably take it outside and see if I can do a few pull starts and get her to start. Just make sure she's running good and let her run for maybe five, ten minutes just to kind of break it in a little bit. And then uh, hopefully it runs good still and there's no issues and then we can uh, put it in the go-kart. All right, fellas. Time has come to try to start this bad boy. We got gas, we got oil, we got her choked, we got her on. Let's give her a few pulls and see what happens. Please go ahead and click the subscribe button and we'll see you guys again.